Okay, let's get into this one. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to BWTN Sports Gaming. So, there's been a lot of things happening over the last 24 to 48 hours regarding uh, Trevor Bryant, uh, Mahmoud, Chia, Christopher Lovejoy, and Bermain Stavern. So, the last thing I heard, and that was 24 hours ago, was that it didn't look like it was going to be a fight at all. Uh, Schumann off himself had pulled out and um, other fighters that were on the card were not fighting. That was the last thing I heard. And Stavern himself potentially wasn't fighting. So what's going on? So... <laughs> A lot of nonsense going on behind the scenes. It's not my place to talk about what has been going on. What I can tell you, as of, I don't know, last 12 hours, it looks like we are going to get Stavern versus Bryant. Um, I don't know if that's going to be for the full world title or for the interim title. Um, and, and I'm waiting to hear back from Stavern to find out what's going on there. So that fight is going to go ahead. Um so i'll probably get more information after the weighing so that's where we're at with that the fight itself stavern versus bryant both guys have been pretty much inactive um stavern fought let me bring the box track up for you guys very quickly let's bring the box track up for you all so we can talk about this fight a bit more in detail right So yeah, Trevor Bryant, the uh, WBA interim champion. Okay. So let's take a little look at him. Uh, trained by Stacey McKinley. 20 and 0, 14 by KO. Trevor Cosmos Bryant Jr. Six foot four from New York. A Don King fighter. So he last fought 2018 against BJ Flores and he won that. That was for the interim world heavyweight title. Now he was due to face, he was going to fight Anthony Joshua instead of Andy Rees. But according to Leon Muhammad, he said that Eddie Hearn didn't want to do business with Don King. So that's where we got the Andy Rees fight. But now he was meant to fight char however Ben Stavern told us in his interview they'd signed two contracts he said one contract to fight lovejoy and the other contract was to fight trevor bryant now that fight between himself and trevor bryant wasn't going to happen he was going to pull out that fight so the last time Stavern was in the ring was in 2019 against joe joyce now that doesn't look so bad the defeat he had against Joe Joyce doesn't look so bad in a fight that let's put it this way I don't think he was as prepared as he could have been no excuses on, on Stavern's part it's what it is he wasn't as prepared as he should have been and then the Deontay Wilder fight where he was due to fight Dominic Brazil that's what he was prepared to fight Dominic Brazil um, and while uh, Brazil while uh, Wilder was meant to fight Luis Ortiz. Luis Ortiz popped dirty. Then Stavern stepped in at the last moment when he was preparing to fight Brazil. And he set up to fight Brazil. And then he fought Deontay Wilder. We all know what happened in a round. Wilder and Brazil are totally two different fighters. And you saw the result there. The Joe Joyce fight, well, I know Stavern wants to not talk about it. But he wasn't in the shape that he could well have been uh, for that fight. And again, whether that's been lack of preparation or not knowing, I don't know. But he does know about Trevor Bryant. He knows that he was going to either face Christopher Lovejoy or Trevor Bryant. And he said in the interview with us, he said he signed two contracts, one for Christopher Lovejoy, one for Trevor Bryant. So he, he had one eye definitely on Trevor Bryant. I think even through the interview we were doing, 
I, he didn't seem too interested in Christopher Lovejoy. He seemed to have his eye on Trevor Bryan. That's what it sounds to me. So I, uh, this fight will go ahead. For, uh, as, as far as I'm aware of, the fight was is going to happen. You know, he's going to the weigh-in. I mean, I, I believe that I heard um, there was something stopping Stavern fighting Bryan, but I don't know the ins and outs of that. Again, it's not my position to speak on it. So he hasn't fought. But if you look at the level of competition that stavern has been in against Deontay Wilder, Chris Ariola, Ray Austin, you know, he's fought better opposition than Trevor Bryant. This is really a step-up fight for Trevor Bryant of sorts. You know, um, this fight, the way I see this fight is this. Bryant has a, he works behind a good jab, um, has good hands, just likes to work to the body. From what I've seen of Trevor Bryant, likes to work to the body. Um, my biggest criticism of Trevor Bryant, he does seem to fight at one sort of pace for the most part. He likes to sit behind the jab and work behind the jab and everything coming off his jab, which is cool. But it's when Trevor Bryant opens up, does some good work to the body, really like, likes to watch the left hook in, put right hands in, just put some nice nice combination together to body and to head. The only pro of Trevor Bright, when he does throw his punches, he leaves himself open. He's a sucker for the left hook over the top. And he also leaves his chin in the air where he's throwing shots. And in, you know, when he leaves himself, when he opens himself up to throw shots, he leaves himself open for big shots. Um, so defensively, Brian is not defensively responsible. I, you go look at a fight against Castillo. It was like a thirty, a forty-three-year-old Castillo. And that was a good fight where Castillo actually rocked Brian a couple of times. And that fight it was a good. It was a decent fight, you know. Um, and stuck Castillo came to have a fight with Stavern. For me, knowing him up close, had seen him up close and personal. I believe for him. Two things have to be right. We talk about his weight, but he himself has to know that he's in good shape. His weight is key. He needs to be in the low 240s. We need to be, he needs around 240, 245, okay, because he's a little older now. Um, so 245, that would be nice to see Stavern around that weight. 245, even 245. The second thing is, I think this is a, this is mental for Bermain Stavern. You know, you've had two losses. Um, in your record recent times you know you've lost the fights you've lost I've been a good I mean, Deontay Wada former WBC heavyweight champion of the world you know and uh, his only loss came to Tyson Fury and then you've got Joe Joyce and he's not too bad is he you know and if he, Joyce goes on and beats Usuki he's going to look even better still and Stavern wasn't even the best shape for that fight. So, and you know, you, you know, and then the, the Derek Rossi fight didn't look great in that fight either. So since the the, the, the first Wilder loss, Stavern hasn't looked great, you know, so he's had losses. But I think those losses are, I don't want to make excuses, circumstantial. In, in, in other words, I think, see, fight fans, think, well, you know, you turn up, you lost, you're a professional, that's the way it goes. But boxing doesn't quite go that way. Boxing doesn't quite go that way. You sometimes be put in positions, and you've heard it before, even in the UK, where fighters are put in positions to fight, even though they might not want to fight, or it might not be just a window of opportunity. You know, so you have to take the fight, even if you're not in the best possible shape, even if you're carrying an injury. It doesn't matter. You've just got to go and fight. And I would say, from what I know, what I've seen, it's been a case of taking fights because. You have to take them rather than you want to take them. Stavern's had good time to prepare for this fight against Trevor Bright. And, and you know, Trevor Bright's a very totally di different proposition to fighting Deontay Wilder or old George Joyce. Um, again, both of those guys we're talking about are, are Olympians. You know, um, Joyce now should have been a gold medalist, silver medalist, and Deontay Wilder, the bronze bomber, uh, a bronze medalist. So, you know, Stavern was a world world amateur champion himself so you know he isn't, he, isn't get, he isn't getting smashed by guys that or getting beat by guys that can't fight these guys can fight uh, and and arguably yeah both guys are in the top five 
top six of the heavyweight division, arguably. So, you know, he's not getting beat by 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 by, by, by poor opposition. Brian, it's a winnable fight for Stavern. But for Stavern to win this fight, mentally, he has to he has to say, you know what? I'm better than what I've put myself out to be. You know, I hope that he's had, you know, extensive sparring. I hope that he's really given himself the best possible chance against Trevor Bryant. Because a win against Trevor Bryant gets him back in the picture. And he's, he, it's a winnable fight for Stavern. It's just what Stavern shows up. Um, Bryant hasn't fought since 2018. Stavern's fought in 2019. So, I mean, inactivity and all the rest of it, injuries. So, again, mental, mentally, he has to be switched on and and take the opportunity literally with both hands. Stavern's a counter-puncher by nature. So, Bryant will walk on to a lot of Stavern's shots. Stavern has to be sharp, like I said, mentally and physically, and he has to want it and believe it. And if he if he wants it and he believes it, he can beat Trevor Bryant. No doubt in mind, he can beat Trevor Bryant. But it's what state of mind and body Stavern is in. You can say that for a lot of fighters, but this is key for him. You know, it's very easy to talk about guys who've got winning runs and guys who've got um who are active and all the rest of it a little more difficult to talk about guys who haven't been so active and you look at their record and they've had losses when we look close into the fights and we look close into the, the, the behind the scenes of what's been going on again it's not my position to talk about those things but when you when you look at those things from behind since what's really been going on and even Stavern himself alluded in his interview with myself about how things could have been done differently there are really no excuses here for against trevor bryant to be honest apart from like i said the one thing that probably would have stopped him taking this fight but again that's for him to disclose that not for me um but yeah as far as i'm concerned the fight is on and um trevor bryant i guess i would call him a chancer the type of guy that will take chances and leave himself in a position to get hit. Do you understand? And like I said, Bryant's style is a sitting duck for Stavern. The, you know, the Stavern that fought Ariola, but that's a Stavern of a long time ago. So Stavern has got to look at what he's done in the past and say, okay, the situation with Wilder happened, the situation with Joyce happened. This is a fight now. It's a winnable fight. You know, it's a winnable fight for Stavern. And the guys, the two guys have sparred before. They've sparred it a numerous times. So they know one another. So it makes it an interesting fight. It's just that if you can put it together, he can get the win. But he has to put it together. Um, according to his trainer, uh, Charles Mooney, who also trains um, Korobov, Matt Korobov, who... Um, was doing well against Chris Eubank Jr. until he got injured in that fight. His trainer said to me, told me that he's in great shape, changed his diet, lost a lot of weight, gone back to basics. So that's what the trainer's been saying. So I just hope that what the trainer's saying and what the fight is doing equals a performance that puts, puts some respect back on Stavern's name, as they say, you know, because trainers can always talk good, great stuff, and fighters can say what they want, but ultimately the proof of the pudding is in the eating. You know, Stavern coming on at 260, 270 pounds, you know, that's not great. So he needs his flexibility and mobility, that what he has, you know, even at this age, he needs that, you know. And heavyweights, they mature as they get older. So experience is going to be is, is key, but you know you have to give yourself the best possible shot. So that's my thoughts on Trevor Bryant versus Bermain Stavern. It's a fight he can win. If he is going to win the fight, I believe it will be through Stavern, but it's Bryant leaving his chin up in the air when throwing shots, and Stavern landing the left hook. Left hook. The left hook is key for Stavern in this fight. He's a shorter fighter in this fight, but he likes seems to like the taller guys. 
So and he likes guys that come to him, he says. So, I mean, he didn't work out too well against uh, Deontay Wilder, but it doesn't work out too well for most guys in heavyweight division against Deontay Wilder, unless your name's Tyson Fury, you know? So that's it. Um, so I expect to see Stavern versus Bryant. And I expect to see for the WBA heavyweight championship of the world. And if Stavern can turn this round and he can beat Trevor Bryant, an unbeaten fighter, um, that's a, that's a step in the right direction in 2021. So that's the latest. And as soon as I can get that interview for you with the former WBC heavyweight champion of the world, I'll be with you with that. All right. So you stay cool and uh, we'll talk soon. Take care.